Hey Reflections, so today we're going to be talking about some visions I've been having, specifically neural networks, machine learning, uh, pixels, grayscales, all of that stuff. So a lot of this information I'm just learning right now, obviously, because it's what I've been viewing in my third eye visions and also in my dreams, my lucid dreams. So. I'm probably going to be doing a lot of share screening and a lot of videos to share with you what I've been researching. Obviously, I'm not an expert. I am merely just getting information from Akasha, from the internet of internets, from space, basically and I am researching that. So don't ever be discouraged. Don't ever think that knowledge is hidden. Don't ever think that knowledge cannot be sought out, that it is not attainable, because if you think about it, all this is, all reality is, is cubes of information, okay? So that's what I've been seeing in my third eye visions and my lucid dreams. I've been, God, there's a lot of planes. It's one thing that's really been obnoxious to me and something that I really have to speak out against because number one, I'm a highly sensitive person and I am just so overstimulated that I have to spend so much time alone in silence and reflection and meditation, mostly in silence because number one, it bothers me. It bothers me so much, all of the noise, all of the overstimulation and I feel that it is done to keep us in a certain vibration okay, to keep us in a angry, um, trying to think of the words, um, a very low vibration, a very low density vibration. There you go. So whenever I hear sirens or ambulance or helicopters or noise that is not natural, it gets me into that very low vibration, honestly. And also another thing that I wanted to talk about is the fact that I can hear the electricity. I can feel the electricity and everything. And that is also very annoying, actually. I, I, I hear the buzzing of the electricity everywhere. Now, the neural network that I saw, number one, I didn't know what it was, so I had to do research. Unless you've been living under a rock, I think I hardly need to motivate the relevance and importance of machine learning and neural networks to the present and to the future. What we're going to do is put together a neural network that can learn to recognize handwritten digits. This is a somewhat classic example for introducing the topic. There are many, many variants of neural networks, and in recent years there's been sort of a boom in research towards these variants. You and I are just going to look at the simplest, plain vanilla form with no added frills. This is kind of a necessary prerequisite for understanding any of the more powerful modern variants, and trust me, it still has plenty of complexity for us to wrap our minds around. But even in this simplest form, it can learn to recognize handwritten digits, which is a pretty cool thing for a computer to be able to do. As the name suggests, neural networks are inspired by the brain. But let's break that down. What are the neurons, and in what sense are they linked together? Right now, when I say neuron, all I want you to think about is a thing that holds a number. Specifically, a number between 0 and 1. It's really not more than that. For example, the network starts with a bunch of neurons corresponding to each of the 28 times 28 pixels of the input image, which is 784 neurons in total. Each one of these holds a number that represents the grayscale value of the corresponding pixel ranging from 0 for black pixels up to 1 for white pixels. This number inside the neuron is called its activation. And the image you might have in mind here is that each neuron is lit up when its activation is a high number. So all of these 784 neurons make up the first layer of our network. 
Now jumping over to the last layer, this has 10 neurons, each representing one of the digits. The activation in these neurons, again, some number that's between 0 and 1, represents how much the system thinks that a given image corresponds with a given digit. There's also a couple layers in between, called the hidden layers, which, for the time being, should just be a giant question mark for how on earth this process of recognizing digits is going to be handled. In this network, I chose two hidden layers, each one with 16 neurons, and admittedly, that's kind of an arbitrary choice. To be honest, I chose two layers based on how I want to motivate the structure in just a moment. And 16? Well, that was just a nice number to fit on the screen. In practice, there is a lot of room for experiment with a specific structure here. The way the network operates, activations in one layer determine the activations of the next layer. And of course, the heart of the network, as an information processing mechanism, comes down to exactly how those activations from one layer bring about activations in the next layer. It's meant to be loosely analogous to how in biological networks of neurons, some groups of neurons firing cause certain others to fire. Now, the network I'm showing here has already been trained to recognize digits, and let me show you what I mean by that. It means if you feed in an image lighting up all 784 neurons of the input layer according to the brightness of each pixel in the image, that pattern of activations causes some very specific pattern in the next layer, which causes some pattern in the one after it, which finally gives some pattern in the output layer. And the brightest neuron of that output layer is the network's choice, so to speak, for what digit this image represents. The goal is to have some mechanism that could conceivably combine pixels into edges, or edges into patterns, or patterns into digits. And to zoom in on one very specific example, let's say the hope is for one particular neuron in the second layer to pick up on whether or not the image has an edge in this region here. The question at hand is, what parameters should the network have? What dials and knobs should you be able to tweak so that it's expressive enough to potentially capture this pattern, or any other pixel pattern, or the pattern that several edges can make a loop and other such things? Well, what we'll do is assign a weight to each one of the connections between our neuron and the neurons from the first layer. These weights are just numbers. Then, take all of those activations from the first layer and compute their weighted sum according to these weights. I find it helpful to think of these weights as being organized into a little grid of their own, and I'm going to use green pixels to indicate positive weights and red pixels to indicate negative weights, where the brightness of that pixel is some loose depiction of the weight's value. Now if we made the weights associated with almost all of the pixels zero, except for some positive weights in this region that we care about, then taking the weighted sum of all the pixel values really just amounts to adding up the values of the pixel just in the region that we care about. And if you really wanted to pick up on whether there's an edge here, what you might do is have some negative weights associated with the surrounding pixels. Then the sum is largest when those middle pixels are bright, but the surrounding pixels are darker. So the weights tell you what pixel pattern this neuron in the second layer is picking up on, and the bias tells you how high the weighted sum needs to be before the neuron starts getting meaningfully active. And that is just one neuron. Every other neuron in this layer is going to be connected to all 784 pixel neurons from the first layer, and each one of those 784 connections has its own weight associated with it. Also, each one has some bias, some other number that you add on to the weighted sum before squishing it with the sigmoid. With this hidden layer of 16 neurons, that's a total of 784 times 16 weights, along with 16 biases. And all of that is just the connections from the first layer to the second. The connections between the other layers also have a bunch of weights and biases associated with them. All said and done, this network has almost exactly 13,000 total weights and biases, 13,000 knobs and dials that can be tweaked and turned to make this network behave in different ways. So when we talk about learning, what that's referring to is getting the computer to find a valid setting for all of these many, many numbers so that it'll actually solve the problem at hand. Relations in the first layer, according to these weights, corresponds to one of the terms in the matrix vector product of everything we have on the left here. 
So basically what I saw was a neural network and I saw it as a cube, a green cube. And that really reminds me of the cube matrix or the black cube that we're constantly talking about. But what it was, was a series of neurons firing. And it was firing from uh, place to place all simultaneously. And I was going through the square, through the cube, and I was seeing in both the in and the outside perspective and an aerial perspective and an actual perspective of everything like a 360. So that was really cool, again, I don't know anything about this. I am just following my visions. <laughs> so again, if you do have any information, please comment down below, let me know. I would always love your input. So the first one was seeing the neural network and seeing how um, the network works. And the second vision I had was going through a cube so this was very DMT space, okay? And I was going through fractals. I was going through cubes of information from cube to cube to cube to cube. And I was data collecting, okay? I was collecting all of this data, all of this information. I like to call it the field of information, okay? And it was basically a fractal. And I was going through these cubes, these fractal cubes into um, different cubes and co again collecting information. So the second uh, third eye vision that I had which was on the full moon so basically what I do what I have is I have visions pretty much every single day every week I have lucid dreams like multiple four or five lucid dreams a week and they're very active and they're mostly active around the period of the full moon so I will see it a week before and a week after I will uh, and the week of I will see um, a lot of visions and it will basically be accompanied by a vision of the Sun or the vision of the moon again representing binary uh, duality all of that stuff so this time around I had a vision of what I thought was a QR code but again I did my research and I found out that that was the way machines learn and they basically learn through pattern recognition so I, I was basically seeing pixel patterns uh, with the different scales the different gray scales so between black and white and gray and I was seeing it's basically just move like pixels everywhere and again didn't know what I was seeing. I'm going to insert some information so you could obviously see it throughout um, the video. And uh, yeah, so that was the other um, vision that I had. Now, the third vision that I had, again, was a binary code contact. And they were contacting, again, through uh, the dots, the uh, Braille-like um, I forget what it's called, what type of communication, but please, again, if you know, it was in my binary code contact. And yeah, so basically what we are interacting with is a quantum computer, either our brains are the quantum computer or, or we are a holographic projection of the quantum computer. Whatever your perspective is, please comment down below and let me know. There's a lot of information coming. Also, another thing that I forgot to say, when I did see different codes, okay, first they were different types of codes. One of them, which really freaked me out, was um, <laughs> because it was just, when I have these visions, I can't really fall back to sleep. It, it takes me a while, actually, because I'm just so stimulated and so excited. So what I saw was actual code. And if you're a programmer, if you know anything about um, machine learning, neural networks, programming, whatever, please comment down below again. Let me know. I've been seeing codes that start off with D, O or D0 and then a whole entire line of numbers and they were just basically grids of codes and streams of codes so yeah guys that's what I've been seeing things are getting weird I am going to be going through uh, a lot of my dreams that I've had recently I've had a lot back to back to back to back each more interesting than next, some more terrifying than others, but all equally making me understand and making us collectively understand the human experience. And 
reality. <laughs> anyway, reflections, I hope you're having an awesome, awesome, awesome day. Hey Reflections, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and check out my other videos.